Welcome. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph this ellipse. Um, but in order to graph this ellipse, we've got to make sure we write it in our standard form. Um, and we, when we write it in our standard form, then we can identify is you know, the major axis horizontal and vertical. And then once we know that, we can start identifying those values. And that's going to help us graph it. So the first thing we need to do is notice our standard form is you know, x minus h squared, y minus k squared. right? Those are binomial squared. So I need to take this equation and rewrite it as a binomial squared. And obviously, we like it um, you know, divided by the a squared and the b squared and so forth. So the first thing I want to do is group the x's and the y's together and then get the 144 over to the other side. Even though we know the equation has to equal 1, I'm going to worry about that at the end. So I have 9x squared plus 72x plus 25y squared minus 150y equals negative 144, right? I just subtracted the 144 over to the other side. I guess maybe I'll write that in there. OK, so now to write binomial squared, we got to create perfect square trinomials. And to create perfect square trinomials, we got to complete the square. So the first step in completing the square is getting your um, quadratic terms having a coefficient of 1. So what I'm going to do is I am going to factor out, I am going to factor out um, the coefficients of my quadratic terms. So in this case, I'm going to factor out a 9. And when doing that, I'm left with x squared plus 8x. And then here, I can factor out a 25. And that's going to leave me with a y squared minus 4, 5, 6 minus 6y equals negative 144. All right, so now comes into the lovely part of completing the square, creating that perfect square trinomial. And to do that, when we have a quadratic in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c, to complete the square, we're going to take b divided by 2 and square it. All right, so here's a quadratic. I just don't have a c. In each one of these parentheses, I have quadratics. They just don't have c's. However, I can till, still take the value of b divided by 2 and square it. Um, so therefore, I'll take 8 divided by 2 and square it. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 squared equals 16. Here I have negative 6 divided by 2 squared. Negative 3, that equals 9. OK, now I'm going to take those values and add them back into my equation. And I want to use all my colors again. So I have 9 times x squared plus 8x plus 16 plus 25 times y squared minus 6y plus 9 equals negative 144. Okay? Now, um, it's important for us to understand that I added a 16 and a 9 on the left side of the equation. So I got to add a 16 and 9 on the right side of the equation, right? If you add something on the left, you got to add it on the right. However, we got to make sure that I when I multiply, when I add this on the left side, I added it inside the parentheses. And inside the parentheses, it's being multiplied by 9. So therefore, on the right side, I got to multiply this value by 9. And since I added 9 inside parentheses here, that is being multiplied by 25. So I'm going to multiply this by 25. And it kind of seems like it's just going to be some math that I'm just going to use my handy dandy calculator to be able to figure all this out here. So 16 times 9 is 144. Uh, minus 144 is going to be 0. 9 times 25 is going to be 225. OK, so by doing all of this math, I end up getting 225. Now the next thing I need to do is I see that each one of these parentheses, I created a, quad, um, a quadratic. But what's important about completing the square is I didn't just pick, I just, just didn't create any quadratic. I created a perfect square trinomial, a perfect square quadratic. Um, one that I can factor now down into a binomial square. So I'm going to factor each of these into binomial squares. And when I do that, I now obtain 9 times x plus 4 squared plus 25 times y minus 3 squared equals 225. 
right? Because all of that adds up to 225. But however, remember to um, set this equal to, in our standard form, we have to divide by 225 because we want it to equal 1. And I divide each one of these other terms by 225. And then I'm going to reduce, I don't know how many times, 9. So that goes 1 over 25, and that's over 25 times 9, right? OK. So when I divide these, um, this goes to 1. That goes to 25. Divide 25, um, or factor out 25. That goes to 1, and that goes to 9. Therefore, I have the standard equation x plus 4 squared over 25 plus y minus 3 squared over 9 now equals 25 over 25 equals 1. Now I can graph my equation. Whoosh. OK. So one thing I notice is, remember, our standard form of our equation is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals 1. Now depending on what is your larger number, the larger number is always going to be your a squared for an ellipse. So since 25 is larger than 9, I can say the a squared is going to be under the x and the b squared is under the y. And when the a squared is under the x, that means I have a major axis of symmetry, which is very, very important. So now let's get into what information do we need to know to graph. First thing I need to know is the center. And the center is in the form of h comma k. Um, so it's opposite of h, opposite of k. So in this case, my center is negative 4, positive 3. It's the opposite of your h and your k. The next thing is I need to figure out what is a squared, what is b squared, and what is c squared. Well, a squared is 25. b squared is 9. And c squared, we don't have anything for c squared there, but there is a relationship for a squared uh, or for c squared, which is a squared minus b squared, which is equal to 25 minus 9, which is equal to 16. So a squared and b squared and c squared are, are helpful, but really what we want to know is what is a, b, and c. So if a squared equals 25, that means a equals 5. If b squared is 9, that means b equals 3. And if c squared is 16, that means c is equal to 4. Now again, why, what does a, b, and c represent? A represents the distance from the center to your vertices. B represents the distance from your center to your covertices. And C represents the distance from your center to your foci. So with all that information in store now, I can plot the center, which is at negative 4, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. And remember, since A squared was under x, that means I have a horizontal major axis symmetry. The major axis of symmetry is where your foci, your center, and your vertices are all going to lie. So when it says a is 5, I'm going to go to the left and, or to the yeah, left for you and to the right um, 5 units to find the two vertices. So I go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. To the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then to find the covertices, that's going to be on the minor axis symmetry, which is perpendicular to my major axis. So that's going to be up three units and down three units. Then the foci, again, has to lie on the major axis. That's going to be four units. So I go over four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And let's label these here. Foci, foci, vertice, vertice, covertice, covertice. Um, the last thing I like to do is let's go and label actual the points. Because by graphing this, you just connect the vertices and the covertices. All right. So we know the center is at negative 4, 3. The foci is just 5 units to the left and to the right of the center. So basically, all I'm doing is subtracting 5 from the x-coordinate. So that's going to be negative 9, 3, and uh, 1, comma 3. Right? Notice the y-coordinate stays the same. Right? They're on the same horizontal line. Um, that's not the foci. That's the vertices. But the foci is the same thing as the vertices. It's just left and right. However, it's only 4 units. So I'm going to subtract um, 4, and I'm going to add 4 to my center. So that will give me negative 8, 3, and uh, 0, 3. So notice how the foci and the vertices and the center all have the same y coordinates because they all lie on this major axis, which in this case is horizontal. So therefore, the y coordinates are always going to remain the same. 
And the last thing is our co-vertices. Now our co-vertices are going up and down. So therefore, they're not going to change horizontally. They're only going to change vertically. vertically. So I go to my distance from my center to my co-vertice is 3. And I'm just going to add and subtract that to 3 as negative 4 remain the same. So I have negative 4, 6 and negative 4, 0. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph an ellipse by writing it into standard form and then identifying your vertices, foci, and co-vertices. Thanks.